Hello ghosts and ghouls and welcome to another episode of Danica Raven's Bite Size Horror. It's September so we're heading towards spooky season, therefore I thought it a good idea to read you a little ghost story. This one is called Harry by Rosemary Timperley. If you're sitting comfortably we shall begin. Such ordinary things make me afraid. Hot sunny days, dark shadows on grass. Children with red hair, and the name Harry. My daughter Christine was five years old. It was a hot, sunny day, and she was playing alone in the garden. I overheard her talking to someone. I went outside to see who it was, but there was nobody there. I was puzzled. Who are you talking to? I asked. Harry, she replied. Harry who? I asked. She shrugged her shoulders. Just Harry, she said. That evening when my husband came home from work, I told him about it. He said it was normal for kids that age to have imaginary friends. I tried to put it out of my mind, but something about that name, Harry, sent a shiver down my spine. The next day, Christine was playing in the garden again, while I was in the kitchen. Again, I heard her talking to someone. When I looked out the window, I thought I could see a dark shadow on the grass. It looked like a person, but maybe it was just my eyes playing tricks on me. I tapped on the window and I told Christine to come inside for dinner. Can Harry come too? she asked. No, I said. Harry has to stay outside. But he's hungry, she whined. Who is Harry? I asked. He's my brother, she replied. But you don't have a brother, I told her. Yes, I do, she said. His name is Harry. Who told you that? I asked. Harry told me, she said. My daughter spent every day in the garden, talking to her imaginary friend. After a while, it began to worry me, so I took her to see a psychiatrist. All children need friends their own age, the psychiatrist told me. If they don't have friends, they invent them. It's a normal part of childhood. As soon as she starts school, she'll forget all about it. Talking to the psychiatrist reassured me, but I couldn't help feeling nervous. A few days later, Christine started school. I dropped her off in the morning for her first day. I kissed her on the forehead and waved goodbye, then watched as she walked up to the front door of the school and went inside. There was something I had to do. I took a bus into the city and made my way to a large grey building. It had been four long years since I visited the building. It was the orphanage where we adopted Christine. The woman who ran the orphanage opened the door and invited me inside. I told her I needed to know about Christine's history. Who were her parents? Where were they now? Had they died? And if so, how had they died? I'm sorry, the woman said. We have strict rules about divulging such information. I told her it was very important. I begged and pleaded. I got down on my knees and eventually the woman gave in. Very well, she said but this must remain strictly between the two of us. Christine was born into a very poor family. Her parents didn't want her. They were drug addicts and they neglected their children. The house they lived in was in terrible condition. One night, the mother and father got into a violent argument. The father grabbed a knife and ended up stabbing his wife to death. He cut off her head. Then he attacked the children. Oh my God, I exclaimed. When the police arrived, it was all over. They found Christine in the garden, clutched in the arms of her brother. She was unharmed. Her brother was dead. He'd been fatally stabbed. And as he was dying, he managed to grab Christine and take her to safety. They found their father and mother inside the house. The father had taken his own life. My eyes were welling up with tears. What was his name? 
I asked in a trembling voice. Her brother, what was his name? His name was Harry, she replied. I stumbled out of the orphanage in a daze. I wandered through the streets with no idea of where I was going. The name, Harry, was floating around in my brain. I felt like I was in a nightmare. I was so frightened, but I didn't know why. Then I looked at my watch. It was after three o'clock. I had to pick up Christine from school and I was already late. I hopped on a bus and eventually I arrived at the school. I walked down the hallway and went into the classroom where I found the teacher gathering up her books. I'm so sorry I'm late, I gasped. Where is Christine? Christine, the teacher said. She's gone. Gone? I cried aghast. Yes, her brother picked her up a few minutes ago. My heart sank in my chest. Without another word, I ran outside and started shouting my daughter's name. I was running down the street, searching for my daughter, screaming and crying hysterically. It was no use. She was gone. I spent the next two weeks in bed. The police searched for Christine, but they never found any trace of her. Her picture was in the newspaper. Her face was on milk cartons. Everybody was looking for her, but it was as if she had disappeared into thin air. After a while, people lost interest and the search was called off. It remained just another unsolved mystery. Years have passed since then, but the pain in my heart never goes away. The fear never ends. Such ordinary things make me afraid. Hot sunny days, dark shadows on grass, children with red hair, and the name Harry. That was Harry by Rosemary Timperley. I hope you enjoyed that ghost story. Please let me know if you have a ghost story you would like me to read on the show and remember to drop those requests for what story you would like to hear most this Halloween. Good night and pleasant screams.